It says live now. We're live. Stephen McCullough is live. Hello, so, everybody. Yes, we are live. Hello, um, everybody. How you doing? Coming to you live from sort of Chicago. Home of the Cubbies. All right. Woo. Go. Go to Phoenix. I went broke. And in 1998, I got in front of an investor. And I said, if you'll spend every penny that it takes and you'll send me around the world, I'll build the fastest growing marketing company in history. And he said, yes. And he didn't know I'd never been in marketing. <laughs> and I was broke. And it was all I could do to pay my rent. And so for five months, I began traveling the country going to meetings like this to convince the world that we could teach them about computers. And I went to California and we had a room this big. And I was up here. Four people showed up. You see, there's a time and a place for everything. So what happened next was we sold the two million packages. We did over two hundred million dollars in sales in a couple of years. It was shocking to a marketing industry across the world. I traveled 39 countries. You can tell from my voice, I'm just a southern boy. I, I wasn't, wasn't ready for what happened. Well, that's why I'm here today because of something he pointed out last year. Around Christmas 2016, I got a phone call. And a friend said, hey, let's get involved in Bitcoin. I don't know. You know, I think that's kind of, you know, magical stuff, ain't it? And uh, Bitcoin was $600 a coin. And I've been following it since it was 300 Uh-oh. All we have is audio. Huh? We don't have any video. All we have is audio. Says who? Hello, everybody. He says who's on the screen? I don't know what you're talking about. But could you help me by? Ah. Today I'm going to show you how we're going to teach the world. Because he taught me to buy Bitcoin. So I bought my Bitcoin for $1,200. I bought five of my Bitcoin for $1,200. Well, now I got friends calling me going, man, Bitcoin's down. Bitcoin's down. Yeah, it's $7,500. I guess it's down from $1,200 last year. Bitcoin has rose an average of 200% minimum every year except one since it began. Bitcoin is the gold of cryptocurrency, but the problem is the world doesn't understand anything that was just set up here. I mean, that was a wealth of knowledge, and that's why we're here. So what happened next was I wrote a book called The Bitcoin Buyer's Club. And the book was to teach me about Bitcoin because it was so freaking confusing. And so then... About four or five months later, my friend Will, who's back here, one of the co-founders of this company, called me because he knew I was getting engaged now because I'm one of those people that has two voices. I have mine that you hear and the one that talks to me inside of my head. And it kept saying, hey, Steve, why don't we go teach the world about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency? Notice I say Bitcoin a lot. Why don't we go teach the world about this stuff? And I'm going, no, 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 leave me alone. Leave me alone. Because I was in the oil and gas industry last year, at the top of the oil and gas industry, corporate America. And, you know, it's like, I'm married. I got a wife. I got to keep her happy. You know, pay the bills, the house, everything's good. Please go away, voice. But it wouldn't go away because it kept saying, somebody's got to teach the world about cryptocurrency. The world has to learn. And the world can learn about cryptocurrency. They can learn about this mining thing he was talking about. They can learn about ICOs. They can maybe get involved in the newer coins as they come up. And maybe you can win. That's why Dr. Kenneth Lewis has us here. So you can win. You know, what people don't realize right now is America's way behind in this. And across the world in Japan, I, a huge percentage of transactions are happening for cryptocurrency. Where you're sitting here yourself saying, well, how does that work? Well, here's how it works. You buy Bitcoin. You get a little debit card. Just like the one you got in your pocket. But Bitcoin's on that debit card. And you go into the store and you eat and you swipe your card and it pays for your food. <laughs> Bitcoin is currency. It's the future of global currency. Across the Asian markets, across South Africa, across the African markets, people are moving to Bitcoin really, really fast. Why? Well, there's a few reasons. You touched on You know, a lot of people can't get bank accounts in third world countries. But you can get a Bitcoin card. And you can put your Bitcoin in that wallet he was talking about. We're going to teach you every bit of that today in the way that you need to learn it from here. And we'll step up. We're going to show you how to buy Bitcoin. We're going to show you how to store it in a wallet. We're going to show you how to do everything you're supposed to do with Bitcoin. And because let me tell you, as I was writing this book, and my friend Will called me last November, 
November. And he goes, Steve, I got four people on the phone. Now, remember, I'm in corporate America. I don't need this. And he said, uh, we want to build your idea. I said, we what idea. Because those people should have been on the phone with me. And he goes, no, no, come on, Steve. You know, we teach you more cryptocurrency because I've been working on it. But I'm not the expert. He's an expert. That table full of people back there are experts. I'm not an expert. I just knew I've done this before. And I can do it again. But this was bigger than the internet. Because in the internet days, I afraid my computer. I don't want you to teach me how to use a computer. I don't need a website. We were marketing computer education websites. It was a limited market because people were afraid of computers and didn't think they needed websites. Well, look what happened next. Okay, so here we are again. So they get on the phone with me and they said, Steve, we want to back your idea. Why don't you explain it to us? What do you need? And I said, I need a million bucks. And I just went quiet. <laughs> and I wanted them all to hang up the phone so I could go back to my work and just do corporate America 10 years, retire, happy life, happy wife. Well, they didn't hang up the phone. And so about 30 minutes later, they said, okay. And I got off the phone, and I looked at my wife, and I said, they said, okay. I didn't mean for them to say, okay. And so, but they didn't bring the money yet. That was my sales pitch to her. And I knew who I was. And I said, so if they bring the money, we'll talk about this. And so three weeks later, I get a phone call. You know, you have those moments you remember. I remember where I was when Michael Jackson died. I remember where I was when Elvis Presley died. I remember when they called me back. And I was sitting in my SUV, and they come over the loudspeaker, and my wife's sitting right there, and they go, we got $450,000 we can start. Yeah. And I hung up the phone with them, I go, honey, and she's back there. I go, can you just give me a year? And she goes, a year? You know what I mean. She goes, Yeah. Because I don't need a year to build a one-year-long company. All I need was a year to prove to the world that we can go out and teach the world how cryptocurrency works. So what did I do next? And why did I need a million dollars? Well, I had to hire the top marketers, top attorneys in the SEC industry. Had to hire top attorneys in other industries. Had to hire top direct sales marketing people. Had to hire 60 translators. 60. We started on uh, January 10th. We wrote 45 lessons. Now we hired the experts or experts in this field. Who are experts in this field? People who have been around about two or three years and figured it out because there ain't no teachers. Okay? So we hired four experts. We designed 45 lessons to teach everybody in this room and across the world about cryptocurrency. And they're audio video lessons, so they're like seven and 13 minutes long. And you just watch them. There they are. There's 15, you take a little test. There's 15 more, you take a little test. There's 15 more, you take a little test. 45 lessons, and you'll be smarter than 90% of the people in the world on cryptocurrency. That's what we did. Then what we did was we took those 45 lessons, and currently the programmers are putting them up now, and we put them in Spanish, in Portuguese, in Chinese, in Italian, in Swedish, and then the list goes on to 33 languages because we have seven of them done voiced over ready to go teach the world about cryptocurrency. Why does the world need to learn about cryptocurrency? Because it's here to stay. And it's the future currency of our world. And you, it's like Dr. Kim said, you know, kind of miss that internet thing. I didn't miss that internet thing. I got me a little piece of it. But when this thing came along, you know, it's like this. Computers, website, currency? Yeah. Everybody wants currency. So what we're here today to do now is to teach you how Bitcoin and cryptocurrency work. How the ICOs work. ICO, initial point offering. Okay, now I'm gonna take take a moment to make fun of myself. Hope you don't mind. He talked about this fork. I want y'all to understand what a fork is to a normal human being that doesn't understand tech. Because that's me. I design software and I have programmers work for me, but I do not understand this stuff. I don't continue. Okay, the fork came along in July of last year. I'm brilliant now. I'm educated. Been involved three months. <laughs> I got this figured out. Don't predict anything like I said. Remember that. So, I'm listening to people that don't have a clue about Bitcoin. And I think they all do everything. And so, I have a goal in my life. I want to own 20 Bitcoin. Not bad. Not a bad goal. 20 Bitcoin. I'm at 17. I'm three away. All right. So, I'm going to take advantage of four and I'm going to earn five Bitcoin. I'm going to tell you how I'm going to do it. Y'all remember how I did this. I predicted 
that Bitcoin would crash to twelve hundred dollars right before the fork, and then it would go back up, and I would sell out right before the crash, and I'd buy back in at the bottom, and then I would go up with it, and I'd be over twenty Bitcoin. Happy life, happy wife. Gas and oil industry. I'm going to stay there forever. Got my twenty Bitcoin. So here's what happened. So y'all can understand how these exchanges work. What's an exchange? It's where you go and you can trade coins for coins. Bitcoin for Ethereum. We'll teach you all this. Okay? You can exchange it. So what happened was it began to fall. There's that moment. I saw it. I triggered. I sold 17 Bitcoin at $2,200. Bitcoin turned around and ran straight up. And I'm trying to buy back in. But here's the problem. It's like a highway in Chicago where there's too many cars and no one can move. The exchanges froze up. And I couldn't buy back into Bitcoin. And the fork came and went. And I couldn't buy back into Bitcoin. And so now you got to know what happened when the fork took place. Because what's a fork? Let me explain to y'all what a fork is. We all understand. <laughs> it's a software upgrade. It will make things work better. Okay, sounds good. So the fork took place. I'm over here frozen out of the exchanges because when the fork took place, evidently I didn't know what was going on. Everybody preset buys and sells, and all the exchanges froze. And so I'm froze out of the fork with 17 Bitcoin. Well, I forgot to tell you what happened next. For every Bitcoin you owned, they gave you one Bitcoin cash. So in about three days, I lost seven Bitcoin and 17 Bitcoin cash. Why? Lack of education. I didn't have none. That's when I realized how important what we were about to do could be. That's when I got the phone call. That's when they brought the money. And that's when we began developing. So on January 10th of this year, we began developing a company called CryptoGix. And now we brought the experts. We flew them in they're from Seattle. They're from California. They're from Chicago. And they're here to teach you from an ABC standpoint about Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, why it's so important, why it should matter to you, and how you can win. Yeah. That's what we want to do is win, isn't it? Yeah. All right. So we want to get it. It doesn't matter if you win into trading or if it's in ICOs or if it's in mining or if it's in educating the world. We just want to win. You know, I want my piece of the Bitcoin revolution. Do you want your piece of the Bitcoin revolution? Yeah. Well, you're in front of it because look at this room. There's 200 people in this room. You're in front of ninety-five percent of people in Chicago have never been in your room where anyone explained anything to them about Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. But they have to move to that place because that's where the world is going, and that's where we want to help take you. And that's why we teamed up with Dr. Kenneth Lewis, and that's why we're here. So now we're going to go ABCs of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. We're going to bring some people up here. We're going to go through this day, and when you leave here today. You're going to understand the eight-year history he just gave you. You're going to understand it. So you won't care about parts of it. Parts of it you'll love. We're all different. You know, we're all different. You won't care about some of it. Some of it you'll love. And that's what we're here for is to show you how it works. Because here's my history of Bitcoin. In 2008 and seven, the housing industry collapsed. See, I got good life and I got bad life. Okay? We all got In 2008, I own the mortgage company. <laughs> Anything I was doing in 2009. I, you know, we got good life, we got bad life. I remember when they took my house away. We got good life and we got bad life. But just because they took my house away didn't mean I was going to give up on life. I didn't create the mortgage collapse. I was just caught up in it. And just so y'all know I'm a nice guy, I need two adjustable rate mortgages. In seven years, because I'm old enough to remember the savings and loans collapses back in the 80s, where they robbed everybody. And so when people were doing adjustable rate mortgages, it started coming, and that's what caused the housing industry to really collapse. Uh, I wouldn't sell it, because I could either give you 6% or 6 and a quarter, and it wouldn't adjust. And I convinced everyone to go the right way. So when that industry collapsed, 2008 was a critical moment. Satoshi Nakamoto, the mysterious name. 
the man, the woman, the group that invented Bitcoin. They invented Bitcoin in 2008, 9. Why? Because the housing industry collapsed. And Bitcoin was invented to protect, I'm not anti government at all. You fix nerves down, talk about it. was invented to protect me and you from financial collapse. That's why I was invented in 2009. Because the world just collapsed. Okay, so does that make any sense at all? It's 2018. We're in the United States. We built pretty safe. Well, I don't know about you. I lost my house when it collapsed last time, so I didn't forget it so well. But now, Zimbabwe collapses a few months ago. Okay, so let's say you're living in Zimbabwe and you got Zimbabwe dollars, you got Bitcoin. The day after Zimbabwe collapsed, you were flat broke. Or... Your Bitcoin was worth far more than the Zimbabwe dollar because it fell to zero. So now you're worth more money. It was the first example of how this was all designed to protect us from local or global financial collapse. He talked about value. Where's the value come from? The value comes from what we believe the value is. Why did it go to 19,000 and fall back down? Because the whales. What are the whales? This is the stuff you really want to know. The whales are the people that have a lot of money and a lot of coin. And what they do is they run into a coin, and I'm telling you, you can see it. Once we teach you how to track, you can see these little transactions taking place. Chick, 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 chick. They're small, and they run the price up. And you go, oh, God, it's going up. i got to get in. And you get in, and they jump out. And so the whales manipulate value in the cryptocurrency space. This is the things you have to know. Because if you're going to be involved, you, you don't want to get took. You want to be educated, and you want to understand this stuff. So, you know, we got good life, we got bad life. Well, I had a really good life. You know, that, that little thing where I lost my house and stuff, that's life. You give up or you go on. So I moved into the oil and gas industry, and to be honest with you, I, I'm not a bragger. I just got to explain to you why I'm saying this. I, to, I, I climbed to the top of the oil and gas industry and saved because I'm from the construction background. I worked for concrete as a kid, went to college for concrete and construction. And I'm telling you this for a reason. I walked away from the good life for the next life, which was the cryptocurrency life. And so, you know, it's in Houston, Tampa, Chicago now. Why? Because of cryptocurrency. And this is just the beginning of us taking this to the world and doing boot camps all over America and beginning to grow a thing worldwide. So I told you that uh, in January we started and in April the 1st, we started accepting members. I'm not here to try to sell you that. I'll be honest with you. I'm here to help you get educated so you can do better in life and be a part of this cryptocurrency space. We have members in 82 countries. And we started on April the 1st. And so we're on to something about educating the world into the cryptocurrency space. So with that, I want to bring up our next speaker. And a gentleman by the name of Brandon Ivey. He's a Actually, he's, he's more than just a speaker. He's a he's a trainer. He's a cryptocurrency enthusiast. He's come out of that working world in the cryptocurrency world. And today, he's going to talk to you about a few things. He'll be speaking a couple of times to you today. So we can begin at square one. So when you leave here this afternoon, you're going to say, man, that was a good experience. I think I understand cryptocurrency a little bit now. And now I know why I need to be involved. So if you all would give Greg and I be a warm welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> Well, hello, Chicago. How's everybody doing today? Great. great, great. I'm all the way from California. Sat on the Dallas tarmac for hours. Got in about 4:30 this morning, so I'm wide awake. <laughs> well, I'm going to talk to you guys about why you should even care about cryptocurrency. Why you should. Pay attention to it and involve it in your lives because most people are like, I don't know what that is. I don't care about it. It doesn't mean anything to me. I'm not doing any transactions with it. The dollar is key. This is all nerd talk and this is all monopoly money. I don't care. And I say that because that's what I thought about Bitcoin the first time I heard about it. And the first time I heard about it was in 2012 when Bitcoin got above $100 for the first time. And it came on my radar screen because it it made the news. This thing called Bitcoin was rising up in value and people were investing in it. And so I, I learned about it, but I didn't pay any attention to it. 
came back on my radar screen about 2013. I was regional vice president of a company and we were looking for ways to cut costs and make our business more efficient. And the CEO brought in ideas and says, listen, you know, two of the biggest issues we have is dealing with chargebacks with credit cards and fraud. And also being able to pay our members and conduct business in other countries that deal with different currencies. You know, you have the exchange rate, dealing with Western Union, dealing with PayPal, or dealing with Paysa or whatever financial issue that we can send and accept money from. So we said, we can use this thing called Bitcoin. See, one Bitcoin in Japan is worth one Bitcoin in the United States. So we can now pay commissions using the Bitcoin stuff. Give an example. If you're in Nigeria back at that time and you earn $50 commission, by the time we got the money to you, you made about $5 after all the fees and everything were taken out of it. So it wasn't worth it. We had to go through this whole back channel of creating a new bank account in another country, putting $100,000 down, putting somebody in that country on the bank, making sure that they don't run off with all the money. It's a whole process. But the leaders of the company at that time didn't understand and believe in Bitcoin. They said, no, that's going to be the end of us. So we didn't do it. Came on my radar screen in 2014. And Facebook, how many of you guys are on Facebook? Raise your hand. Almost everybody. Facebook records everything you do. And then a year later, it pops up as your memories. You guys know how that works, right? Well, I wrote in July 2014 that a business partner of mine in Japan, she owns a restaurant. And she made the news of having the very first Bitcoin ATM machine in Tokyo. And it made national news over there and it made news in the United States. But did I get involved with Bitcoin at that time? No. I didn't know it. I didn't understand it. It was monopoly money to me. It was something that nerds in their mom's basement to play with all day long. It didn't have anything real for me. <laughs> then I came on my screen again when the price kept going up. I bought it for the first time in 2016 when it was a little over $700 a coin. And the rest is history. But I want to, I want to take it back. How did I even get involved in this space? See, I grew up in a family in California that might be considered the Hudson's. You know, my father's very, very successful. He's of that mindset. You know, you get a job, you work that same job for the rest of your life. He became, he started off as a, as a car washer for a company called Met, uh, Metropolitan Water District in Southern California. And he can only be a car washer and drive executives around town because of the color of the skin. They didn't hire minorities. But he broke through that barrier after he got his degree and ended up becoming CEO of that company and one of the highest ranking black officials in the United States of America. So he taught his son, myself and my brother, listen, if you want to have success, then you need to follow the American dream of getting a job, going to school, getting good grades. How many of you have been told that? You know, you want success in America, you've got to go to school, get good grades, get a good job, and work that job for the rest of your life. Because he worked there for over 40 years and retired with a full pension. So by the time I became an adult, I did that. I graduated from Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia. I went on to have a nice career going for myself, but due to no fault of my own, I was laid off not once but twice. How many of you have ever been laid off before? Raise your hand. That's not a good feeling when you look yourself in the mirror and say, I did everything I was supposed to do. Yet I still got laid off. I can't provide for my family. What worked for my father's generation is not working for my generation. So I must do something different. And I decided at that point to become an entrepreneur. I got involved in the direct selling industry. I saw people that own their own business, people that work for themselves are making a whole lot of money. So I said, if they can do it, so can I. Well, it didn't work for me. I, I, I didn't make any money for our first 10 years. But it was a learning experience. Because I learned that people that don't work for anybody else think completely different. They have a different quality of life. So I said, this is what I need to be in this way. And my father fought me on that. And I had to tell my dad, I said, Dad, if I follow your example, because how many people in your company became a CEO like you? You can only be one CEO of a company. So I have to do something different. Because those of you who haven't been laid off, this is the reality for you if you weren't laid off. You work that same job, putting in more hours and more time, hoping to get a raise, if you're lucky enough. You're going to work that job for 40 years of your life, if you're lucky to not get fired or retire. And you're going to retire at the age of 65, depending on family, government, and friends, and broke. That's a government statistic, 97%. No more 401k, no more savings, no more retirement. 
Your house is a liability and not an asset. That is the current state of while we're training people in America today. So I want to go the direct selling. The last 10 years, that was 20 years ago. I can't believe it's been that long. I turned 42 years old this year. So I got started very young. In the last 10 years, I started to have great success in the direct selling space. So much so that I was able to retire, walk off my job at the age of 36 years old. Haven't been back since. I don't say that to impress you, but to impress upon you that every single one of you is just one decision away from making a choice. But when you make that choice, you want to make sure you are in the right industry that is also growing. It wouldn't make sense for me to say, I'm going to retire. I work for Blockbuster. Blockbuster was at the wrong industry. That looks too long. So the right industry, let's fast forward to how we get today. After I bought my first Bitcoin in 2016, 2017 came around and I saw friends of mine in the Bitcoin space becoming millionaires. I was like, this Bitcoin thing, you're making, you're making a living off that? So yeah, full time, living off of Bitcoin. At the time, I was vice president of sales and marketing for a direct selling marketing company and I wasn't happy. I was putting a lot of hours, a lot of work, and I was making less money than I was when I was actually back out in the field. So I said, I think I need to make a change. I've got kids. My oldest just finished his first year of college. And I said, I've got responsibility. I want to make it to the next level. So the industry that I saw that things started to happen in was the cryptocurrency industry. And friends of mine were putting in a lot of money investing. And one thing that caught my attention about that is they had no idea what they were doing. I mean, you're going to invest $20,000 and you don't even know what a Bitcoin is. A hundred thousand, five hundred thousand dollars, and they say, I don't need to know what it is. Everybody's making money, it keeps going up. So I said, Okay, I need to learn and get educated about this space first because I didn't have twenty thousand and fifty thousand to invest and work with, I didn't have the resources. So I spent months being self taught, learning everything that I need to know about crypto, and I learned two things that shook me to my bone. That changed my life forever. The first thing that I learned is that cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, is the fastest growing industry in the world today. It is also the greatest economic shift in wealth in the history of mankind. <coughs> and that is a very strong statement to make, especially if you don't understand what this is. But the most important part is, it's the greatest economic shift in the history of mankind for the most amount of people. See, there's been other great shifts in wealth before. But it's been blocked for most of us. You had to either be born in the right family, the right country, speak the right language, have the right skin color to be able to participate in these past economic revolutions. But because of cryptocurrency, there's no barrier to entry. You literally can start with $5. You don't need a bank account. All you need to do is have access to a cell phone and the internet. We have over 2 billion unbanked people in the world today who never have had access to wealth because they didn't have access to credit cards, debit cards, bank accounts, the basic necessities that to be as a foundation to build wealth upon, to be able to own property, to be able to pass it down to your family. Now, they all have access. But what shook me about that is they don't even know it exists. That's what Stephen said. We're going to bring cryptocurrency knowledge to the world. And it should be because I my people also don't even know this is exists. They don't even. I, I was that person. I had to step outside. My comfort zone and do something different. Now, so how many people are like me just wanting to learn this on their own? The second thing I learned was the technology behind it. The blockchain technology is going to revolutionize the world. We are at the early stages. We are the vanguard of a new era. The blockchain technology is going to disrupt every single industry on the planet today. Whether you like it or not, whether you understand it or not, whether you want to get involved or not, you all will be a part of it. You have two choices on how, and I'll talk about that later when I talk about the blockchain. But that technology.
acknowledging it is, I mean, there's a lot of people who don't have it think that there's a scarcity. And there's not. There's a, I call it the river of money. So you got to picture what wealthy people do. Wealthy people have boats, yachts, oil rigs on this river. And the river is the money. And they're fishing in it every day. Only they have big nets. The rest of us are sitting on the banks of the river with little fishing poles, working on nine to five jobs, getting our little beach. You know what a job does? Only pays you enough money so that you don't quit and you only work hard enough so, so you don't quit. It's, it's a process. So you give, me, you give me a little bit of money, but what happens in history sometimes, that river changes course and moves in another direction. But if you're on a boat, if you're on a yacht, you're on an oil rig, like the wealthy, they move with the river and they adapt and they change. And they're still fishing. While we're still sitting on that dried up riverbank, there's no more water there. We're still trying to fish out of that. Where's the river go? Where's my, what happened to my money? See, that shift in that river is taking place right now. It's shifting again. We saw a glimpse of this in 2008. With the housing mortgage crisis, when people lost their jobs, they lost their houses, they lost their mortgages, no more 401k, gas prices skyrocketed. Our way of life was hit, the greatest recession since the Great Depression. But who got bailed out by the government? The banks that were too big to build, businesses that were too big to build, individuals who caused the problem in the first place. Did any of us get bailed out? No. <coughs> Did any of them go to jail? No. So Stephen talked about that Bitcoin, even though it was in development before then, that event was a catalyst for it to become popular. When people lost faith in the system, we lost faith that the government and the banks are going to be there to save us, to protect us. We want to be able to take matters in our own hands. We want to be able to own our own financial future. And cryptocurrency allows us to do this. So after I got my education and learned about this, I said, okay, I'm ready to, I'm ready to make my millions like, like these guys did. Let's get started. There's three main ways you can make money in crypto. The first way is by buying and holding. And this is probably the most popular that you've heard. Yeah, I bought Bitcoin when it was $200, and then it got up to $10,000, and I had like 5,000 Bitcoin. You hear stories about that all the time. People who got in early bought it when it was low, and now they made a lot of money now. It's what's going on. Because experts, and I don't want to make any predictions, but experts, depending on who you listen to, say that Bitcoin price may raise anywhere between 50000 a coin all the way to a million dollars a coin. How's that possible? But there's only going to be 21 million coins ever in existence, supply and demand. There's 36 million millionaires around the world today. So if every single millionaire on the planet said, I want to own one Bitcoin, there's not enough to go around. So what happens? The value of your Bitcoin is going to rise. Everybody in this room should have at least one goal. And that goal is to own, own at least one Bitcoin. And put it away. Don't touch it. Put it away. See where it goes in the future. The second way is to learn how to trade. You might think of the stock market or the Forex market. How to trade Bitcoin. Because that's another way Bitcoin millionaires are made. And the third way is mining it. You'll hear later about what mining means. Mining is the backbone of this entire industry. Mining creates the blockchain. The blockchain, once it's created, rewards the miners with Bitcoin and crypto. That is how the whole process works. There's a whole mining process. So if you own mining rigs, we have a gentleman that's going to talk about the next wave generation of mining. And as I tell my 10-year-old son, would you rather buy the golden egg or the golden goose that produces the golden eggs every single month. That's mining. There is a, I call it hashtag or asterisk or fourth way, ICOs. But the fact is 92% of all ICOs fail within one year. Only 8% survive. It's kind of like the dot-com era of the internet. A lot of those businesses fail. Amazon survived. And now the richest men of the world came from that era. That's where we are right now. So if you're going to get involved in ICOs, you definitely need to be educated. Now, I got my education. I'm ready to go. I have 30 bucks. That's what I started with. $30. I'm 
I open up my own little trading account on Bitrix. I put my $30 in there. And then I took the dollars that I learned and I turned that $30 into $600 in less than 60 days. Now that may not seem like a whole lot of money to you, but think about the percentage. What if I started with 3000 instead of $30? What if I had 30,000 in there instead of $30? Well, that would have been in 60 days. And I got excited by that. And then I said, okay, now I made some money. Let me take some more money and invest in something else. So I took another hundred dollars invested in something else. And that started making me a lot of money. Then I said, oh, I'm learning about these ICOs. Oh, let me get on some of the ICOs. I got in on a couple of ICOs. And because of the knowledge that I learned, when I cashed out on them, I made more money in one day than most people make in a year on their job because of crypto. And again, that happened because of education. Because at the same time, there were people who lost a lot of money. But I had one also big failure. I invested in other companies. One of these companies you might have heard of in 2017 that said, you know what? If you give us your Bitcoin, I will take your Bitcoin, invest it for you, and we may give you a 1% to 2% a day, 30 to 40% a month. I saw that. I'm like, this can't be real. But there was evidence to back it up. There were people that were making a whole lot of money. So I got involved. I said, okay. We put some in there. This is what happens. I got to a point where I had about forty thousand dollars invested, and I was making over almost two thousand dollars a day. Things were great. It was rocking and rolling until it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> until something called the SEC got involved. The United States government said, "Hold on a second. That is the sale of a security. You need to be licensed to do so." Then we realized, wait a minute, the owners of the company aren't even in America. They're in Asia. We don't even know their name. We don't know who they are. And they decided because, oh, we don't want to deal with you, let's pull out. And they took everybody's money. They took everybody's big money. Now, I had made more money, but I lost a $40,000 investment and $2,000 a day in future income. Now, at that point, I could have said, you know what? This whole crypto thing is too risky. It's too scary. I'm going to I'm going to pack my bags and go home. I guess I'll go back to a nine to five job again. Oh, no, you know, that doesn't work. So I said, if we're going to do this, you're going to have wins. You're going to have little losses. You know, we don't like to guarantee too many things, especially the income earnings in this space. You can't make predictions, but there is one thing I can guarantee if you enter this space. It might scare some, but I can't guarantee that somewhere along the way, you're going to lose somewhere along the way. I don't know how much, I don't know when or where, but if you know this that your education means you're going to win far more than you lose. Nobody wins 100% in the stock market. Nobody wins 100% in the forex market. But with education, you now have a fighting chance. Now, why should you get involved? And I'm going to speak to those of you who say, you know what? I don't understand all this. I'm, not, I'm just going to go back to my life. You know, thank you guys for hanging out today and learn something new, but it's not for me. It is for you because it's going to be put upon you. See, we're still living on the U.S. dollar like it's king right now. 2008 should have been a wake-up call, but for most it hasn't been. And we're in line for another economic crash much bigger than what happened in 2008. Only this time around, the government's not going to be able to bail anybody out, not even the banks. Or the government. How could this come into play? Well, Stephen said that America is behind on what's taking place in crypto, on this innovation right now. But the rest of the world is not. I'm going to quote Vladimir Putin. Anybody know that name? <laughs> Vladimir Putin said that the Stone Age didn't end due to lack of stones. It ended due to the introduction of better technology. The United States for 70 years since World War II has been leading the world. And that era is coming to an end because we are not leading the world in new technology and innovation anymore. You've got countries like China, Russia, and Iran that are working together to say, you know what, I think we're sick and tired of the United States being number one, of the U.S. dollar being key, of having to listen to whoever's president of the United States. And we're tired of, we don't do what they say, they're putting economic sanctions on us. 
So if you're a leader of these countries and your ultimate goal is how to get under the rule of what they call is American imperialism. And one way to do that is get away from the thing that controls that, which is the U.S. dollar. So they're actively working on ways. If they see this digital tech currency, this digital technology, this crypto, Bitcoin stuff, blockchain as a way to get away from U.S. control. Vladimir Putin says something else. Whoever leads this space will be the new world leader in the future. So Iran, China, Russia, and many others are actively engaging their citizens. They're educating their populace. They're investing. China just announced $1.2 billion investment into blockchain startups for Chinese citizens. They just announced this last week. But the ultimate goal of how we can live in a digitized world where we can now do oil transactions and other economic transactions between member states without having to use the U.S. dollar. And when that comes into fruition, what happens to our dollar? Who's going to buy our debt? And then what's going to happen to us who's living on the dollar right now? You think what happened in Venezuela, Zimbabwe, Greece? These are isolated incidents. It has happened to us before in the 20s, and it can happen again. So indirectly, we're going to be hit. Now, that's a worst-case scenario. Let me tell you the best-case scenario. Let's say the dollar doesn't even collapse. Still, you're going to wake up one day, you're going to be driving down the street, and you're going to see Bitcoin ATM machines all over the place. Say, whoa, whoa, where'd that come from? Where, what's happening here? What is that? You're going to go into your job one day, and you're going to, they're going to, you're going to be in a boardroom meeting, and they're going to say, whatever product or services your company sells, we're not going to be accepting cryptocurrencies. You're going to walk into your Starbucks, and you're going to see we accept Ripple. Ethereum, Dash, Litecoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash. You're going to say, what is that? You're going to see people pulling out a little debit card or Bitcoin card and paying for it. The worst is they're going to go into your job and your boss is going to say, due to us wanting to cut costs and have more efficiency, not only are we adding blockchain technology into our business, and we'll talk about what that is later, but what they're going to say is we're not going to pay your salary in Bitcoin which means every single one of you is going to be forced to have to get a Bitcoin wallet and understand and learn this space. So you have a choice. You can choose to get engaged and involved now and profit from it or have it brought upon you later and you're reacting to it. There is no other choice here. And our mission and our goal is to bring cryptocurrency awareness to the masses. We want to at least make you aware that this is going on so that you can make the decision that I need to get educated on this space. And once you're educated, then you can maneuver around this space on how you can get in where you fit in. You might like mining, you might like trading, you might want to buy and hold, you might want to do this or that to make money in this space. You might say, you know what, I've got an idea and I'm going to use blockchain to build my company. You might not be able to go through the IPO route, so you go through the ICO route. You know, there's so, if this is going to disrupt every single industry, and it doesn't matter, whatever you decide, you can make a living in with this. And that is the whole point. See, I listen to one thing Jim Rohn said, that's his ultimate goal, to build a financial wall so big around his family that nothing can penetrate it. Today, we have the opportunity to do that with our family. And what scared me into action that I'm now passionate about is that this did not happen for my father. He didn't take advantage of the dot-com era when everybody didn't know what email and the internet was. They thought it was a joke. It's not going to happen for my children. This is a golden age of where we live right now. This is where we are right now is the internet, 1991-1992. So if you think you're too late... You're not. Here's some statistics for you. Because of Ellen DeGeneres, Big Bang Theory, you know, uh, uh, Ellen, who was that? Ashley Kushner was just on Ellen a couple of weeks ago and donated $4 million in Ripple to one of her charities. Because of those platforms, we've been exposed to Big One. Maybe 50% of the population has heard about it. Only 8% of Americans have invested in the crypto space and that is about $1,500 or less, which makes a little bit of sense because the average American right now, more than 70%, don't even have $1,000 in their savings account. So 8% out 
has invested. But out of the entire population, only half a percent even understand what this technology is. So all those people that were investing in it last year, they don't even understand it. All they know, people make money in Bitcoin, so am I. But then they end up becoming the biggest losers as well. And they're getting their education from the media. When the media says that Bitcoin's a bubble, it's a thing that's been here nine years. I've never seen a bubble pop and then reinflate itself over and over and over. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, apparently we lost the live feed. Uh, just want to let you guys know that we lost the feed and <clears throat> we will be picking feed back up uh, when it's ready and it's capable. So we'll be talking to all of you all again very soon. Watch for the next segment. Um, as this happens, as it, as it progresses, we will bring it to you guys. And we will um, definitely keep you informed as to what's going on. Um, let me see if I can get this live back up and running. Um, I don't know how much time I have. I think you're, are you there, there? <laughs> so it's in and out. I'll, I'll be talking. Um, talking all day. Yeah. So, but, but, I, but, I, but I'm. It's in and out. In with this, guys, because I'm going to come back later. We're going to talk about the technology, the blockchain technology, and why it's so important. I've traveled the world so far. You know, I just came back from a blockchain expo in the UK, and one thing that I saw in that in, in that room was 50 percent of the people in, in the blockchain expo had no idea what it was. It, I was utterly, utterly amazed by that. You know, when you're going through booth to booth and you're talking to people, once you start asking questions and they get off their little company script, they look at you like deer caught in headlights. They didn't even know what was going on. So there's opportunity here for all of us. And it is your responsibility to take advantage. Because I don't want to have my 10 year old when he turns 20 saying, Hey, daddy, I remember you kept talking about all that Bitcoin stuff. Um, why are we broke? <laughs> why are we broke? You didn't get involved in it. You know, there's a book. I can't remember the title of the book, but he's reading a book right now written by an 11 year old about Bitcoin. 11 year old. The, ne the next generation is growing up with this technology, is not foreign to them, and wants to share it with others. See, when Stephen, the guys came to me about the whole cryptogenics, I said no, because I had enough knowledge myself to take my own money and invest it for myself. But they said, Brandon, one thing, how many people ask you about cryptocurrencies every single day? 90% of my day, how, what's a Bitcoin brand and how do I get a wallet? How do I buy it? How do I sell it? What does it mean to me? Can I transfer it to dollars? Can I buy something? And I said, I help him out. He said, well, what Dr. Lewis does is wants to help out the entire community. And after all his success, he retired. But now he's looking at the next industry, the next big thing. And that is where we are right now. So thank you guys for coming out today. <laughs> Let's give it up for Mr. Brandon Ivy, everyone. Listen, I'm so excited about this information. That so okay, let me, I, I see. I don't know why we got that. But That's we're it. Gonna, I don't know how to put it. Answer. We're getting interruptions here. Um, I think they're getting ready to break for lunch. We have seen Mr. Stephen McCullough and we have seen Mr. Brandon Ivey. And when we come back from lunch, Joe and I'll be talking about the things that they talked about until we get live feedback. And um, I believe this afternoon we'll be hearing from 
many different speakers. I'm not sure how many of those will be able to get live. We are having some tef technical difficulties today. So we'll be back here. We will announce it on Facebook that we're going live. Hope to see you then. Everyone have a great afternoon and we'll see you soon.